Barnegat Bay is one of the jewels of the eastern seaboard. It's a watershed and wetland of global importance to wildlife, a crucial location for the fishing and crabbing industries, and the beaches on its barrier islands are one of the most popular tourist attractions in the country, responsible for tens of billions of dollars in income every summer. But like so many beautiful places, Barnegat Bay is ecologically fragile and needs protecting. And one of the things threatening it might seem small and unimportant, but actually has a huge impact. Lost or abandoned traps that were put out by either vacationers or professional fishermen to catch delicious blue crabs. Maybe they forget about them, or maybe a boat comes by and, and cuts one of the lines. Um, maybe a storm knocks them free and the crab trap settles at the bottom and then they unwittingly gather wildlife. Species are dying in the bay when they get caught in pots that aren't being used anymore. They actually continue to fish. They uh, continue to catch crabs, uh, bycatch fish, blackfish, sea bass, now all kinds of marine wildlife. They're dying in these pots um, and it's having an impact on, on marine species across the board throughout Barnegat Bay. Among the many species that find their way into these lost traps is the famous diamondback terrapin, a kind of turtle that's beloved all up and down the coast, but whose population is now declining at an alarming rate. As they can swim in and get caught, and they, they can't hold their breath underwater, they'll drown in here. And one of these crab traps has been found to contain up to 17 dead terrapins inside. I mean, everything about it is just a, kind of a death trap, because as more bycatch goes in, it dies and becomes bait for more things to be attracted to the pot. Uh, but it, fortunately, it's a problem that we can fight. This program, run by Conserve Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey and funded by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association's Marine Debris Removal Program, is tackling this problem directly by finding these derelict crab traps and getting them out of the water. We're working in conjunction with Stockton State University, and uh, they actually go out and they physically do a GPS grid pattern of the bay of certain areas where we know there's high activity of uh, crabbing going on. Side scan sonar, so an instrument that uses acoustic energy to basically create a picture of what you otherwise can't see underwater. And they give us that information, and we throw grappling hooks on ropes off the back of the boats. Uh, hopefully to catch into the crab pad that we just marked and uh, clean it off and pull them up out of the water. As they pull them up onto the boat, they then bring them back to shore. And there, uh, the Marine Academy uh, students will, will survey the pots. And ultimately then, those uh, crab traps are collected and then brought up to uh, Covanta and Schnitzer Steel. At Schnitzer Steel looks to recycle the metal, and then whatever's left over, Covanta then takes and returns it to energy. The organics from the crab pots are combusted, producing energy for our turbine, powering 30,000 homes and businesses in the area, and the metals from the crab pots uh, go through our process and get recycled, and those are uh, made available on the scrap metal market. So it's really a, a remarkable uh, modern day environmental success story in that what becomes a problem then is turned back into a real positive for the community. This program isn't just about ecology, it's about economics, helping the fishermen and other industries that depend on the bay as much as the bay itself. We run the programs and uh, engage the commercial uh, fishing industry to, to basically um, hire them to be part of our recovery teams. By doing that, they are learning how to use these low-cost sonars, and in turn, they're starting to recover their own pots. So rather than recovering a pot one, two, three years after it was lost, a trained fisherman with a low-cost sonar can recover a freshly lost pot one, two, three days after it's lost. Well, since we've been using the side scan sonar, we haven't used a, lost a quarter of the pots that we generally would lose because of being able to retrieve them immediately after losing them. It's the best thing we've ever done. Last year, our goal was to achieve about 800 pots. We ended up close to 1,300 crab pots last year. Unfortunately, there's no shortage right now of, of abandoned crab traps for uh, us to collect. Uh, but even more importantly, we hope to see this as a model that's replicated elsewhere. 
I mean, we have to make a living out there. That's that's the main, the main thing. We have to make a living, and, and to have all this garbage on the bottom. I mean, that's our backyard. I mean, I, I don't litter my backyard. I don't want to litter the bay. That's where I spend most of my life. Yeah, you, know, you want to go out there and go swimming. You want to go water skiing. You know, do you want to be uh, jumping in that water when it's all brown or when it's all blue? Yeah, you know, and the more that we do to help either clean the bay or protect the bay, in whatever way it be. It's only going to benefit everybody in the end and, you know, in futures to come. Conserve Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey's Barnegat Bay Project was funded by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association's Marine Debris Program and Office of Response and Restoration, New Jersey Corporate Wetlands Restoration Partnership, Fishing for Energy, a partnership between NOAA, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, Covanta, and Schnitzer Steel, and the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. Our partners in running it are American Littoral Society, the Marine Academy of Technology and Environmental Science of Ocean County Vocational Technical School, Monmouth University, Project Terrapin, Reclaim the Bay, and Stockton University.